The chemical Saturn V rocket of the Apollo program, over the course of six missions, put 12 humans on the surface of Luna. Unknown to the public at the time, a radically different type of propulsion system had been considered. A system that could have carried a crew of 150 people to Luna in a single flight. This system would have allowed humans to travel not just to Mars, but to the moons of the outer planets as well. It would do all this using an unconventional but abundant Cold War resource, atomic bombs. This is the Orion Drive. Conventional chemical rockets have been the backbone of space exploration since its beginning in 1957. Their feats have been impressive, however they are close to reaching their peak due to their relatively low specific impulse. Specific impulse is a measure of how efficiently a rocket or jet engine uses fuel. Measured in seconds, it is the change of momentum per unit of fuel used. A single RS-25 liquid fuel rocket engine used on the Space Shuttle could achieve 452 seconds in vacuum. Nuclear pulse propulsion, however, could deliver between 10,000 up to 100,000 seconds of specific impulse. And with a similar energy density to rocket fuel, this would mean not only would a nuclear pulse propelled spaceship be faster than a chemical rocket, but would be capable of carrying massive payloads. The concept of nuclear pulse propulsion is relatively simple. A spaceship would eject and detonate an atomic bomb behind it. The explosion would then turn a high-density tungsten propellant inside the casing into a fast-moving plasma. The propellant would be held inside the casing in such a way that it would all be accelerated towards the vehicle. A large plate shields the vehicle from plasma and radiation whilst absorbing the plasma's kinetic energy, accelerating the vehicle forwards. This pusher plate would be connected to the ship by large shock absorbers, meaning the ship and crew would experience a smooth acceleration. A vehicle of this design could be capable of reaching Mars in a fortnight, as opposed to the six months currently possible with chemical rockets. Much of the research into this concept was done over a seven-year period in a US-sponsored endeavour called Project Orion. General Atomics, a subsidiary of General Dynamics, started the project in 1958 as a response to the Russian launch of Sputnik. As outlandish as the concept seems, the physics behind it is sound. This was demonstrated in many small-scale tests, where models would propel themselves smoothly into the air riding a rapid succession of shock waves from conventional explosives. Freeman Dyson, a notable theoretical physicist, was persuaded to spend an academic year working on the project. Dyson designed three sizes of vehicle. The smallest proof of concept vehicle alone would have been powerful enough to perform a return trip to Mars with a payload of 72 tons. For comparison, the mighty Saturn V the most powerful chemical rocket ever built, could carry only 1.8 tonnes of payload on a return trip to Luna. Dyson's largest vehicle design, however, dubbed the Advanced Interplanetary Orion, would be on paper capable of carrying over a thousand tonnes of payload on a three-year return trip to Saturn. And so the unofficial motto of the project became Mars by 65 and Saturn by 1970. The 9,000-ton Advanced Interplanetary Orion spacecraft would have been constructed less like a rocket and more like a submarine. Built from steel and other conventional shipbuilding materials, the costs of the project would be dramatically lowered. The vehicle would be built in a shipyard to then be towed out to sea where it would be launched. The launch of this steel behemoth would be unlike anything ever seen on this planet. 100 ton yield atomic bombs, or pulse units, would be fired from a gas gun through a hole in the middle of the pusher plate. They would be fired and detonated at a rate of one per second 
for the first stage of the ascent, before switching to 20 kiloton yield pulse units every 10 seconds as the vehicle cleared the atmosphere. The vehicle would travel straight up to minimise time spent in atmosphere, before circularising into a stable 500km altitude low Earth orbit. This launch sequence would require the detonation of 800 atomic pulse units. You may now begin to see why this audacious plan was eventually abandoned. The death blow for Project Orion was in 1963, when rising public concern over fallout from nuclear tests led to the signing of the Partial Test Ban Treaty. This put an end to atmospheric nuclear tests, making further development of the project unfeasible. The legacy of Orion, however, lives on. The simplicity and effectiveness of the technology make it an attractive concept, and it is very much within the bounds of today's technology. Any modern-day nuclear pulse propulsion spacecraft would of course need to be built in orbit. The flaws of rapidly detonating hundreds of nuclear bombs in the atmosphere to put a vehicle in orbit are hopefully easy to see. The building materials needed for the spacecraft could be mined from near-Earth asteroids or lifted using orbital infrastructure, such as a skyhook from the surface of Earth or Luna. In a world where nuclear tensions were a little less strained and where large-scale projects were being pursued in space, there very much could be a place for ships propelled by an Orion-like system. Likely an unmanned cargo vessels transporting huge payloads of equipment from Earth to human outposts throughout the solar system, or exporting valuable once rare resources back from the asteroid belt. Though the idea of thousands of nukes being used so freely and so easily accessible may make you a little uncomfortable. Maybe you would feel a lot safer if all those nukes were packed up and sent out for the solar system. And maybe that's what we should do. Because we still haven't talked about the most ambitious application of the Orion Drive, using it to reach the stars. After the cancellation of Project Orion, Freeman Dyson wrote a paper on what was possible with the upper limits of the technology. An Orion Drive spacecraft that utilised one megaton hydrogen bombs was theoretically possible of achieving 10% light speed in 10 days. That puts our nearest neighbour, the triple star system of Alpha Centauri, only 44 years away. And 11 other different stars within a mere one century of travel time. Perhaps too far for humans, but perfectly achievable for autonomous probes that could send back the first up-close pictures of entirely new and alien worlds. I could think of no better use for all that weaponized uranium we have sitting around mothballed inside bombs gathering dust. A nuclear disarmament program that took us to the stars. <laughs>